I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me is Coleman Hodges, Swim Swam's head of production, and the man on the scene on deck at every swimming meet. And also joining us today is an Olympic champion, world champion, Pan American Games champion, Charlie Houchin. Thanks for being on, buddy. Uh, I, I'm, I really wanted to bring you on. I was excited to bring you on for a few reasons, but, my, but off the top, uh, at Swim Swam, we get inundated with young swimmers who are entrepreneurs, and they, are, they, they come at us fast and furious, and they, the questions are, how can we get in? What do we do? What were the steps? Here's my business. I'm doing business as, and I have this cool new app. And it's, um, frankly, it's overwhelming. And, uh, but as a, as a swimmer, as someone who's in the swim family, we, we have compassion and empathy and we want to support our peers. But I felt like if we're going to cover this topic and swimmers really want to know what's going on, mm -hmm. I think it'd be great to hear from you. Also, uh, I think that you and I are, are kindred spirits. We have a lot of similarities, both uh, in North Carolina roots that's right. Uh, we have the we have we both have Olympic medals on the four by two relay, and we both used our our, our earnings from the Olympics to launch businesses. And uh, so, off the top of the top of the show, did you always know that you were going to start a, a swimming business when you were competing? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had, there, there's a short answer. I had, I had no idea until I had an idea. Um, so the, the story I always tell is my last semester at the University of Michigan, I had a great professor and, you know, I went there to try to make the Olympic team, right? If I could have majored in swimming as an 18 year old, I would have done that. And so I had this great professor, Mark Rosentraub was his name. And he said, hey, Charlie, it seems like you think about swimming uniquely. And did you know that swimming is not going to last forever? And 21-year-old Charlie, is the, this is revolutionary. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's right. <laughs> so he said, why don't you apply yourself? Why don't you take those things? Why don't you apply them to the term paper? And I did. And I started thinking about the sport or continued to think about the sport. Um, but that was kind of the impetus. That was the catalyst for answering the question. Did I always know I was going to start a business? No, I definitely didn't. What was the term paper? What was it? Was this a, was this the, the genesis of a business plan? You know, I would say today it was, it's not the business plan. It was certainly the foundation for it though. Yeah. Yeah. The philosophy. All right. That's cool. It's a, um, I, 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 in, in researching you, I didn't know this and I feel like, an, I feel terrible. I should have known this. Your parents swam. They were all Americans at NC state. They were. Um, they were yeah. that, so you have deep swimming roots. Uh, you have a strong love for swim. That's right. Was, did, um, were they entrepreneurial or did they support your creativity when you were, when you were growing up? You know, they did in so many ways. Um, I think uh, they, they balance each other out really well. My mom's a, uh, she's a teacher and a principal and my dad worked for many entrepreneurs over the years. So I think in terms of the, uh, not to make it sound binary, but the, the strict disciplinary rule following on the one side and the creative going for it, building your own path on the other side uh, came together pretty well. Well, it's, um, I, th I think that when, when you're when you're looking at the in, at the swim market, you know, I've, I've, I'm older than you are. I'm not going to say how much older I am, but in, back when I was a kid, the, I I had dreams of of launching the, a swimwear line. I wanted to launch a swimwear company. I, I wanted to be, I wanted to do what Steve Furness did. Steve Furness launched mm -hmm. Tier, and I think Tier is you know he's watched that business grow into uh, a powerhouse, and um, and, and it, it made a lot of sense. But, you know, if you're in your era, in your age, the, the thing to do is to go into swim tech. And um, I came at swim later, years later, 
And I did want to go into, into the swimming business. And I had, I had some dry powder on the side for my Olympic days. And I wanted to go into swim tech. My spouse, who was a co-founder of Swim Swam, said, I wanted to go into team management or meat management software. And she said, you don't have the sophistication to do that. I think you could do it well. I think you could put together a great team, but you couldn't, your quality control would be questionable. And she said, I think that the, the natural place is Swim Swam. What gave you the confidence to, and we'll get into your business here in a second, but what gave, your, gave you the confidence to go into Swim Tech? Oh my gosh. Uh, being blissfully ignorant. <laughs> now, um, I think I started with the, the original question when I was writing that paper was, gosh, how can we commercialize the sport? A thought that all of us have had 18,000 times, right? Like nothing new. And I read a good article. I can't remember where it was, or this was back in 2000, oh gosh, 10 at this point. And it was reading about youth sports and it said, you know, they may not all be commercialized or sports in general, but if there's participation, there's success in something. And so the line that we always come back to is the strength of swimming is in its participation. You know, people are fundamentally participating in the sport. And so that was, that was the beginning of, of my shift in thinking from how do we, put a 10,000 people in the stands at every single swim meet to, well, wait a second. We got people that are participating in the sport the world over already. And it's highly successful in that regard. What has to be true for us to sort of harness that participation to champion it uh, and, and to make it better, to make that experience better. And uh, it, you are in an enviable position and I had the thank, you know, we're, we're Olympic brothers. So we, we've had conversations for a long time. I should say this, we partnered, but we've partnered at, at, at you partner with swim swam, your company at a, at a small level, a messaging level, yeah. because frankly, you're kind of your own Island. When, when, when I, with a company like yours, you're going to have your own sponsorships and you're going to have your own distribution and reach to a large base. So, it's a, it's a small partnership for messaging, which makes sense for our business. But in, but in learning that about you, I was kind of jealous because I went, wow, man, this guy is like, at the, he is at the nice edge. This is where it's happening. This is where it matters the most, which is what you've explained. You are in the summer league space with your business swimmingly making swim meets, the management of swim meets as easy as playing a game on your phone. Now, that, that's probably a, a ba the wrong way to say it, but no, I like it. It's like you don't have to have pads. You don't have to have all this infrastructure. You can just run a swim meet from your smartphone. Yeah. Give, you know, where, where did that, how, how are you so smart that you came up with this? <laughs> well, I, I think it was what was it right before the '76 games? They came out with the pads. And I remember, I remember because there was something about, well, it can't go to a thousandth of a second. It's got to go to a hundredth because of, you know, if you're in lane one versus eight, it's different. Yeah. Well, that technology is the same today, you know, flash forward that many years later. And the line that we come back to is that the problem in the sport is that we have what we see from our data and just doing research, approximately 70% of the kids that participate in the sport are leaving uh, by the time they turn 13, or they're never even getting to year-round swimming, quote-unquote. Uh, and we see a huge opportunity there, but just resting on the problem for a second. I mean, that's crazy that most of the participation occurs and then leaves before they've turned 13. So we start looking into that. Why is that? So many different reasons. But the big one that we have really honed in on is when you have a new family in the sport, the parents are sitting in the stands for the swim meet portion. You know, that is their, there's the phone. So that's their experience, right? That is the, that's the feedback. Those are the results that they're getting. And, um, you know, frankly, it's boring. When you have a time limit, when, when you have to mandate that a meet can be longer than four hours, it's a clue that there's a problem. And so, we wanted to make the swim meet portion more fun, frankly. And, and our litmus test, you know, you talk about the tech side and all these things, it, it has to be simple and understandable for the newest parent. 
you know, we, God bless those people that have learned high tech, you know, there's so many ins and outs and complications, but if the average person off the street who says, yeah, I'll help time, what do I have to do? If they can't understand it, then by the time we start talking about what's possible in the sport, that family has left, they're gone. Um, and so that's what we're passionate about, making it easy for that newest family. Well, it, it, well, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to tell you to brag, but let's, you know, explain to people with, without them, see, you know, seeing the app and holding, holding, you know, seeing it on their smartphone, explain how easy this is, how simplistic it is and how engaged you can be at a swim meet, every single person at the meet. Yeah, you bet. Swimming. You bet. Um, well, off the top, a lot of a uh, year round folks in the audience here. So this is a, re a replacement or an alternative for touch pads and the console, the whole nine yards, right? Um, so this is an alternative option. And uh, the app, you know, if you, it's like any technology, if you engage with it, it'll engage with you. And so it's a semi-automatic timing system. The starter hits go. It's gonna start everyone's clock automatically. And by clock, I mean their Android device or their iPhone, their iPod, et cetera. Um, so if you're a volunteer and you're timing, you will get the stop, the start automatically. And if you can hit stop and you can hit submit, then those times will wirelessly go to the scorekeeper's iPad, as we call it. It's like the computer table condensed down into a tablet. Um, and then from there, all the results can be you know, tabulated, can be shared with whoever, uh, can be pushed up for real uh, time results, et cetera. So that's the, uh, that's the quick overview of how it works. But one thing to underscore here, Mel, a lot of people probably aren't familiar with swimmingly yet is um, it's different. You know, we're not trying to suggest something better. We are trying to suggest something different. And so we want to provide that as an option for folks. It's as if, if, if you, it's a simple, elegant solution. And the beauty of it is, uh, is that you've taken this to summer league where it's most important, where we have our, we do have this defection at 13. And if you understand swimming, you understand that. I, 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 I get different numbers. This you're probably, you're, you dialed down in this data a little more. Um, that, that is a massive market that flows into year round swimming. And these swimmers become uh, college athletes and they become elite athletes. How large is the summer league swimming market? I know I have my numbers, but I want to hear your numbers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is like the age old question and debate that people talk about it. From our database, our research and our numbers, we think that recreational competitive swim domestically in the United States is somewhere between six and seven million swimmers. So I've, we've seen everything from 1.5 to 2.5. We see the census numbers. Um, define it in a different way and there there's something like 16 million we think that term is a little more loose um but again from just doing the continual research each year uh we think that the opportunity the one of the big opportunities of course is that it is a large fragmented market we think it's around six or seven million and one of the problems and challenges with that is it is a large and fragmented market so and it's a challenging market it's the holy grail for everyone who's in business. So um, we, we have to talk about where we're at right now. We're in the middle of the pandemic. We're at the COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, uh, I, I, my wife and I just got tested. We were sick a few months ago. I thought we'd have antibodies. We, we didn't get sick. We've, we've really sheltered in place for too long. <laughs> we're not exposed to anyone. But it's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fielding phone calls from everyone and all businesses. Uh, and frankly, you know, I would say about 20% of the businesses are going out of business. Mm -hmm. Certain businesses are resilient. They're going to make it through this and they're going to be fine. But even the big players and particularly swimwear companies, some tech companies, they're, uh, they're like, we've lost summer league. It, the, the bite that it's, that's going to come from our bottom line is enormous. So, uh, we have a tendency to be myopic on swim swam and, and, and focus just on that year round, red meat folks who are, who are, who are diehard folks who come to us. Um, but summer league is, is it, it's, uh, it's, it, how is that impacting your business and, uh, how are you going to make it through to summer 2021? Yeah. Great question. Um, and we've learned it's kind of been reciprocated where our focus has been on, 
uh, almost exclusively summer swimming for so long, we've actually had our most, uh, our biggest level of engagement with year round swimming in the last two months. Um, so that's been kind of uh, something we didn't necessarily predict, but you know, here we are with COVID. Um, how's it going with summer swimming? Man, I think the lesson learned so far, um, we lots of seasons canceled, right? HOAs that are simply not opening the pools, parks and recs, pff, we're out, you know, a lot of these mandates. Um, and I think the lesson that we've learned so far is just how lacking the support and the infrastructure is for these parent volunteers that are doing this uh, as a volunteer. They're doing it on a part-time basis. They do it for eight weeks out of the year and then they forget about it. And now they're being tasked with balancing this, this COVID thing with what to do, you know, the, they're stay at home moms or they're working out of the office or they're going here, they're traveling for work, whatever, you know, they're doing all these other things. And now we're asking them, um, here's this huge pandemic, you know, you need to make the best call and figure it out for your league. And I think the engagement, the conversations we've had with these people um, has been very telling that, man, the more, infrastructure we can give them, the more support, the more communication we can give them, um, the better things are going to go because it's tough for them. You know, they're, they're relying on some swam articles. They're relying on communication from us. They're relying on, you know, what the league folks have to say. And in, in a pandemic, you know, you learn that you can never over communicate, but it's been uh, the summer side of the market has taken a huge hit for sure. For sure. We can come back to some. We can come back to the summer league market. But what what I really like about swimming league, and, it, and it's I knew this was something that was going it was going to evolve into is that it's uh, everything in, in in training now. If you're year round athlete, if you're if you're gunning to be swimming college or you're, or to be an elite, is that you you you're not you don't you don't you don't want to be a practice swimmer. You want to be a meet swimmer. You want to mm -hmm. be a performance swimmer, and. Uh, I'm looking at this platform going, wow, man, I'm a coach. And on Thursday afternoon, I can run a meet. Uh, how much engagement are you getting from year round teams saying, Hey, they're way co coaches are waking up going, wow, we can, we can run a meet and have it completely buttoned up. Everybody can watch it on their phone. And, uh, how much are you, are you getting some bounce there? We are. Yeah. The short answer is yes. Um, when, when this, uh, when the COVID thing started happening, uh, there was a shift. And, and it was very noticeable for us. And we started having these conversations with folks at the LSC level, um, with year round head coaches, assistant coaches, even some colleges at this point, um, USA swimming folks. And, um, you know, it's been an opportunity built on, on a crisis. And we had been very focused on summer swimming, um, not because we didn't care about the other side of the sport, uh, but now, you know, I think there's a lot of alignment. And like you're saying, I think the message that we're trying to deliver to especially the year round teams is we have such a ingrained understanding of what it takes to run a swim meet driving across the state. I grew up in Raleigh, so I got to go to Charlotte and three hotel night stays with my parents and gas and this and that. Um, and just breaking down the barrier of what it means to run a swim meet. You know, again, it's not to replace those meets because they'll always be there and they'll have their place. Um, but just introducing something different, an alternative option. Um, so when we talk to people about what the app can do with virtual swim meets now, as an example, um, the answer is you can swim anybody, anytime, anywhere. And you don't have to do anything except do it during swim practice. No more lane rental space, nothing like that. Um, and so just what has to be true to cause people to think differently about what it means to run a swim meet. Um, and that's what we want to use the tech for with USA swimming. Imagine that. Uh, yeah. Nitro could swim, swim Mac could swim in cap machine aquatics at, at a huge level, a college, uh, Texas, Cal, um, Indiana, they could all have their, they could all be like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do our, we're, we're going to do our, 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 uh, our, our end of fall invitational on uh, swimmingly. And frankly, no one know about it, or it could be, it could be open. Here's a question. You know, what if I'm, what if I'm a fan and you're yeah. running this virtual meet 
you know, could I sit here and just watch the results, you know, str uh, scroll in? hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Virtual, the, the virtual meet, uh, application sounds, sounds fantastic. And I, and I, 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 I can't wait to see the first big one. And I, I, I here's the thing you, yeah. you're in this where I, we both know something that a lot of people probably take for granted and that they, they do know it if they're in swim coaches are so they're great. Coaches are not always the greatest managers in the world. They're, 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 they're hyper-focused on their athletes in the pool and getting them to adopt something new is not the easiest thing in the world. You have to have 50 converts. Some, some coaches that you really want to get up, you have to have 50 conversations with them and then they're going to pass you off to an assistant coach or to a volunteer who then you, you have to explain the value of this so then that they can come back and explain it to them. Right. Um, right. How hard is it to, to get to the marketplace and say, hey, guys, this is an amazing thing. You need it. What, what's your process there? Well, fortunately, it's been born out of kind of necessity with, with the COVID. That at least that's when our conversation has really started with a lot of these teams. Um, the, the message there for them, I'll tell, this is the best story that I can give. Seems to resonate with a lot of people. So I went to the University of Michigan and swam there, obviously. And when I got there, we're living, you either live at West Quad or South Quad. I'm sure it's different now. You know, I'm sure it's a way nicer and everything. And there was always these stories about the Fab Five who was there, you know, like 15 years before me as freshman. And there was always these stories. They stayed at, at South Quad. And there was always these stories about these legendary pickup basketball games that they would have. Um, and this would be, you know, after practice, they're coming back from Chrysler Arena from doing real workout, right? And they get back to South Quad. And they just, they're just playing pickup basketball and there's these huge crowds and it's these legendary stories of, you know, this team compete, you know, this, this, and that. And that's the message for, for these teams that it's going to be as official as we make it together. Um, and it's gotta be, it's, it's gotta feel like pickup, you know, if, if it has to, what has to be true for people to jump in with both feet, they're not going to be sanctioned right out of the gate. You know, what has to be true? It's got to be easy to set up. It's got to be fun. It's got to be something where two coaches who have been best buds for forever are like, man, let's do Saturday morning every week. You know, we can just pick uh, certain events to do or we can compete against each other. That's the kind of feel that we're going for at the outset here where we're just trying to get kids back in the water. We want them participating and competing. It's got to feel like a pickup game of basketball. And so whether it's the head coach we're telling that to or like you said, the volunteers or the assistants, it's easy to set up. It's easy to do even during practice. And it just feels like pick up, you know, swimming. I love it. No, it's, it's, it's this is, uh, I like that you're bringing the element of fun back into swimming and, it, and it's all through tech. Let's talk just a little bit about the marketplace. We really appreciate you telling us about swimming link. Yeah. Um, so I want, I want to know about you and, 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 and the success of your business. The, you put a great team together. Uh, and when, when we had conversations, was, they, they, we, we talked for a long time before we ever really did anything together. Mm -hmm. You were very diligent about it. And you always had a wingman with you, uh, Paige Johnson, fi yeah. finalist at World Championships. Super smart guy, now married to Missy Franklin, who you know is, is, is the most iconic female swimmer in, in recent memory. Um, how did you pick your team? And what, what were you looking for? Oh, gosh. Um, probably my favorite part of what I've been able to do um, and what we've been able to do. Um, you know, I had my, our, my business partner, Hayes and I's other business partner, Mike Curran. I reconnected with him over a chance lunch. Um, and I was back home and he, I was living in Jacksonville training for Sergio Lopez at Bowles at the time. And I was back home for a chance lunch and it was about something else. And I said, Hey, by the way, you know, what I'm really interested in is this business plan. I've actually finished a prototype of the software. This is back February of 2013. And he was like, well, send me what you got. I'd love to take a look. Um, and the kind of the rest is history there. Hayes being one of the next people to join. Um, we made a hire. I'm, I'm recounting. This is so much fun. Um, I put out a thing and said, Hey, we're looking for a, a team member. And this was, very before our first season. 
and Hayes shot me back something on Facebook. I think it was. So um, I had known him a little bit. And so I reached out to Ricky Barron's kind of mutual friend, swam at Texas. And I was like, Hey Ricky, you know, I, I sort of know Hayes. Tell me about Hayes. He's like, man, man, if he believes in a mission and what you guys are doing, I can't think of anybody better. Um, so another good story there. Um, Jason Deanna swam at NC State. There's so many more folks on our team as well, so it won't bore you with it. But uh, the point is, you know, Jim Collins always talks about first who, then what in his book, Good to Great. And we're just uh, maniacal about it. Having the right people on the team is, um, especially in a crisis like COVID, you know, and things are going bad or things are going good or there's an opportunity in the crisis. It really takes you back to uh, why are you doing what you're doing? And like Hayes says, when you're loving doing, you know, what you're doing, you got to love who you're doing it with. You got to love who you're doing it for. Um, and, and that's what we do. We love it. We love what we do. How, how long, when you formed your team from the point of like getting a team together until you actually launched, how much time was there? Because yes. I mean, it, it seemed like you were, it, you took a lot of time in prep. Yeah, I was in sort of an incubation phase for a while. I was still training. Um, and so I didn't officially retire until uh, the end of 2014 or the end of the summer, 2014. We launched our beta summer was summer of 2014. Uh, we started development in June of 2013. Uh, and then that incubation phase, I met Mike uh, at the beginning of 2013 so 2012, 2011, half of 2010, I was still training. Um, so it kind of allowed me the latitude to kind of shop around the idea, to talk to mentors, advisors, et cetera. Well, not, not a long time. I mean, you still were, I mean, you become, you know, winning your world championship gold medal in 13 <laughs> and, 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 and an incubation on your business. So you're not a slouch. I get it. But you did, it felt like you took a long time. I know you had a lot of conversations. I could tell in talking to businesses, you, you know, who's like, who's going to make it? Who's going to have legs? Who's going to be resilient? Because you, these conversations start soon hmm. and they're very professional and the vision is very clear. And um, the, you were checking all those boxes. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of smart kids, great schools, uh, some, you know, D2 and D3, but like, you know, these are legit uh, high level athletes and they, and they come with, with new tech and their, uh, let's just say their, their focus and their vision isn't quite on point. And, and the, my message to them is that oftentimes we hear what they have to say and we just push off. We're, we're, we're listening. I'm, I'm looking for someone who has a very, very clear vision a strong team and they're saying, Hey, we're going to hit these dates and this is what you're going to see. And, uh, we are in, in terms of you, what I thought was interesting was that you, your marketing plan was, was robust. Um, could you talk to me a little bit about your launch and a little bit about your messaging? Because it wasn't strictly, here's my product. This is what we can do for you. It was, um, it was star studded and it was, it, it canvassed the United States. Um, how did you come up with that and how did you pull it off? Sure. Are, are you, what part in particular are you thinking? Oh my gosh. When you were, it's like you had Cullen Jones, Missy Franklin. Uh, it's, um, uh, yourself. It was, yeah. it was a, and, and, and you were touring, you were doing it in cities of Christ. It, it wasn't like, it wasn't just digital. You were physically going out there and pressing the flesh. Well, everyone wants to pretend like they're on tour as a rock and roll band, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I think going back to, uh, to conversations we had with you guys, I think personally, I felt like, you know, I felt like it's taken forever to get to each next step, you know, as any CEO or founder, I feel like would, uh, would say. And so for a while, you know, we just had sort of, uh, preliminary conversations with you guys as an example and, um, just getting the right people in place. Uh, you know, delegation and having those right people in the right seats so we can start to execute on it. In this case, the marketing side is a good example. Um, the, the outgrowth of what you're referring to, we called it the first splash series last year. And um, they were in so many words, live events, part clinic. Um, we always use the swimmingly app to do 30 minutes of racing at the end of each session. It was a lot of fun. 
um, the outgrowth of that was really customer appreciation. You know, we, we wanted to get to these geographic areas and either kick the season off with them or finish the season might've been during the season. Um, but just, just getting out there and education being a big part of what we do, uh, just connecting with these people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so it was customer appreciation. It was definitely part marketing. Um, it was a heck of a lot of fun. I don't know if, uh, if anybody listening was at one, but we had Katie Hoff and Missy Franklin and Colin Jones and Ricky Barons and Elizabeth Beisel. Um, uh, I'm going to forget somebody, uh, myself and Hayes Johnson. Um, but one of the things that's been near and dear to my heart and, and the team as well is when we get to work with these athletes and when they get to uh, serve our audience with, with us, um, one of the big things is, is treating them as professionals uh, in every sense of the word, from everything that we do from logistics to the financial side with them. Um, I remember being the athlete and it spoke volumes when I got to work with folks that uh, treated you like a professional. And so, you know, it's just basic golden rule stuff. But it was so much fun to work with each and every one of those guys. They did they did an incredible job. Okay, well, let's get down to the nitty gritty with with um, with you. Do, do you have investment? Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, is it and, and, and it is that's a comfort level for entrepreneurs? Um, you know, how would you how would you describe your situation? Yep. So we are uh, we're self funded, um, and we're rocking and rolling. That's the, I guess that's the short version. Open, yeah, open to continuing that discussion. But yeah, we've been self-funded uh, to date and uh, it's proven to be very nice in the sense that we are able to adhere to the vision that we set out to do. And we've been very, um, the distractions have been minimal and that's been really good. Congratulations that that's, everybody wants that situation. We are as well, not surprised that, that swim businesses it, it, there's a certain discipline that, that comes with self-funding. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say we're, uh, you know, we're not always hiring. We're not always looking for partnerships or, or what have you, but we're always looking to build the team. Um, and so it, in that sense, we're, we're not trying to do it one certain way, but we are trying to make sure that when we do uh, add folks to the team, whatever seat they're in, it's the right person and it's the right seat. And so far we've been very fortunate. When, uh, when you think of your business and you think of swim technology and, you know, push me out to where we're past Paris in the 2024 Olympics, we're rolling into the, to the LA games. And we remember the 1984 LA games. It's one of the greatest Olympics of all time. Where is the swimming league team? What's your impact in the market? Where, where do you see this tech evolving? Yeah, we want everyone using swimmingly, especially at the summer swimming level. Um, and by that, I mean, we want to educate folks on an easier way, a simpler way to do this. Um, not because we think our tech is super cool. It is not because we think we're super cool. Sometimes we are. Uh, but because what has to be true for the average family who does not understand swimming to want to join swim team and then want to come back and be a part of it again the following year. And as far as that being true, swimming late is the best solution. The, the, do you, have you paid attention to, to the marketplace? Triton Wear, uh, Commit Swimming um, mm -hmm. Form, uh, so the Smart Swim Goggles. I, do, do you, uh, there's uh, Swimtopia is also a platform that manages summer league swimming teams. Uh, do, you, do you consider collaborations with other tech companies? Yeah, um, we, have, we have some relationship with a lot of the companies in the space. Um, lots, of, lots of good folks, lots of friendly people. Um, and the preliminary conversations are usually pretty fun. Um, a lot of times nothing happens, which is normal. Um, but just kind of keeping a pulse and encouraging one another is fun to do. Um, so collaborations, none at the moment that come to mind. Um, but again, doesn't mean that we're not looking. Um, but it's all anybody that's willing to take the step into the, you know, jump into the deep end, so to speak. 
uh, we're interested to hear what their vision is. And if they have a vision that's going to push the sport forward, we want to learn more. Any parting words for young swim entrepreneurs? If you, you know, you've, you've now, you've been through the gauntlet, you've launched, you're, you're impacting the market. What, what, do you, what do you say to someone who comes up to you that doesn't want to be in your space, but they do want to be in the tech space? How would you mentor them? What's yeah. Your yeah. If they're coming from the swimming space, I would take off my, I would take off my swimming hat completely and put on the business hat. And if you can't clearly explain what the problem is, then, then there's nowhere to go from there. And it's such a fun, to, it's, it's a simple thing to do, but simple is not easy. Um, you got to be able to clearly explain the problem and spend, I mean, just spend months, weeks, whatever on the problem first. Um, and the best way that I can do that, I can assist with that if anybody's listening is uh, without a doubt, hands down, go and buy Steve Blank's uh, book called The Four Steps to the Epiphany. He was the mentor and the professor uh, of Eric Reese, who did Lean Startup. Uh, go read Steve Blank's book. It's in your face. It tells you everything you need to know, but you got to know what the problem is first. Charlie, thank you for coming on. I, we're we're going to bring you back whenever a swim tech topic comes up. Love and it. We're hoping we can lean on you and your wisdom. We, we appreciate your success. And uh, thanks, buddy. Guys, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, do you love swim swim as much as I do? Do you want hours of endless practice footage, race video, and a guide to the best pancakeries in the country? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel below. And follow us on social media at Swim Swam News on Twitter and Instagram. If we get a million followers, I might just eat a million pancakes. Only one way to find out.